say that the work that the scientists um, and the government and the three NGOs and other NGOs doing in this part happens quite a while back before it became famous for, you know, for <laughs> the diving spot. Um, we are, we do think that responsible tourism plays an important role in promoting conservation. And with the local government, we have realized that this, this can actually be a powerful tool to garner support in constituencies for, for conservation. So in, definitely in Raja Ampat and in Wakatobi, we are trying to engage the tourism, the, the, the players within the tourism area to be more supportive towards conservation. As a matter of fact, in Raja Ampat, um, the local government is installing a tag fee system. So for everybody who goes there and dive would buy a tag. And the money, the funds that are collected from that is being managed by the local government, is channeled through community um, livelihood projects conservation projects, and of course, uh, back to the government um, treasury. Kasna. Yeah, government treasury. So I hope that explain, I mean, that answers your worries or your questions. Thank you. Yeah, um, can I have a question? Sure. They, they conduct their business. Um, this is currently, the discussion is currently happening in Wakatobi because there isn't big, massive tourism in these two spots yet. The tourism that is happening right now is, is not, it's not, it's not like Bali, it's not even like the Gilis. So at this point, we believe that if we engage in advance and support the local government to create local policy that will promote more sustainable behavior from this tourism, from these dive operators, that we can actually create a more sustainable tourism industry in these areas. Um, in one of the areas where we have more advanced in working with, with, with the tourism industry, which is in Nusa Penida, now our local NGO partner is carrying out the program there, we have been able to work with the local government and um, Grahawisri. Grahawisri is a forum for tourist operator in Bali and Lombok area to have a code of conduct, like an environmental code of conduct, which they agree to abide to when they're carrying out, you know, diving, when they're doing, you know, boating, cruise, and whatnot. We're hoping that in other parts of Indonesia. Something like that could happen, you know, of course, be promoted strongly by local government. Um, but I have to say that none, no area in Indonesia is at the moment as that advanced yet in, in terms of diving or marine tourism. On the Greenpeace side, um, I believe that each organization has its own right to choose the line of approach in order to achieve their mission. And I have to tell you that the NC chooses to be different from what Greenpeace uh, is choosing. So we, um, if we, we've been seeing Greenpeace doing actions that are quite, you know, um, quite high profile. You know, like demonstrative way, you know, with um, in one of the program I saw that, uh, you know, like the saving the whales, like they are trying to even um, sabotage the, the ship. Um, we choose not to do that way, although we may have the same goals to save the planet, to save the earth, to save the ecosystem, habitat, species, but we choose not to do it the way that they they've been choosing. So, as I mentioned before, we, we, we choose to be non-confrontational. We believe that doing conservation works in collaborative ways is more effective. And that's why we work with the government, we work with the private sector, we work with the local uh, people, we work with other non-government organizations, and, 
and we believe that is the most effective way. If other organization choose different way, I think it's the right. And in Indonesia, we don't have any cooperation relationship with Greenpeace at all. I don't know, in the US also, and it's the same with the US, with the NC in the US. So, um, they're more to advocacy. They're, yeah, yeah they're more to advocacy. Not yeah. so, 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 no intel inside. <laughs> not that kind of intel. <laughs> <laughs> not that kind of intel. <laughs> I hope that answers your question, Yes, thank you. Uh, this is the best time uh, we organize this kind of uh, collaborations with uh, NGOs, international NGOs based in Indonesia and in working in Indonesia. Of course, I would like to share uh, what the government of the Republic of Indonesia has been doing in the last 10 years, especially on environmental uh, sectors or issues. First of all, I would like to share with you that the government is now is very aggressive on how to combat any bad impact of um, environment. For instance, I still remember that at the very beginning of President SBY administration, so it's about 17, uh, seven years ago, Indonesia, I mean, the president himself introduced what we call 4P, when we are building our economy. 4P means pro-growth, pro-poor, pro-job, and the last one is pro-environment. That's why, especially on specific issues on climate change, is President SBY himself, during the Copenhagen Conference, Indonesia made a very strong political commitment that we are, in Indonesia is willing to reduce its emissions by 26% by 2020, the year of 2020. You know what? To some other countries, especially like the US, they were shocked of this strong political commitment because Indonesia is not an annex one country, means that we are developing countries. Very few, I think it's the, uh, only Indonesia, the only country that makes that kind of comprehensive commitment, simply because we know our strength. At the very beginning of the uh, presentation of Pak Arwan, he mentioned already that Indonesia is a huge country, 17,000 islands, and we are we, one of um, mega diverse, diversity, uh, bio, biologically diversity country, and also uh, tropical forest. And then uh, Indonesia invite a strong collaborations with countries and also with international uh, non-governmental non organizations. Because Indonesia is a huge country and with uh, huge resources, we have a very limited capacity in terms of financing and also technology and human resources. So these three elements should be collaborated with international uh, what's it, uh, framework cooperation. For instance, on illegal logging, yeah, Indonesia has been doing a lot with the US. We have what we call TIFA, T I F A. Trade investment framework agreement. One of the elements on this uh, agreement is about how to combat, how to help Indonesia combat the illegal logging. We know we have what we call SFM, sustainable forest management, but that's not enough. And we know also that the US have Lazy Act, and also it's a kind of problem for Indonesian products. And then we seek collaborations. And that's why in the ITTO itself, International Tropical Team Organization, Indonesia is strong proponent that when we talk about illegal logging, it's not only the illegality itself, but also we have to see the trade side. Because Indonesia has banned uh, uh, export of logging. So it could happen if you talk about illegal logging, means the law itself legally locked, but illegally traded, right? So it's also against the international uh, trade concept. And, but the other pro, uh, possibility is illegally traded and then legally traded. So, it's Indonesia, if you look at the, the first uh, chapter of the ITTO, uh, what's it, preamble, it's Indonesian proposal to insert about the legality of trade. I mean, it's not only illegal law itself, but also from the trade as aspect. And on merit, Again, Indonesia is an, as an archipelago country. We are all also very uh, aggressive in how to maintain, to conserve our 
marine resources, especially when we talk about uh, bio, uh, marine biodiversity. Indonesia invites international organizations to collaborate with Indonesia and on specific island in Sangir Talaud, we have a very strong collaboration with NOAA, NOA, the National Oceanic Administration of the US. So they have a very comprehensive uh, uh, say, research on a deep sea marine biodiversity at the Sangir Talaud. 2009-2010. Uh, That's on merit. And also, <coughs> we have another problem. Uh, but I think someone's asked about the issue of uh, illegal fishing. Not only illegal fishing that Indonesian governments uh, care of, but also overfishing, right? And that's why Indonesia is uh, very active participating in the negotiations of IUI fishing, illegal fishing, and unreported fishing in 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 Rome. And because we have serious problem with uh, what we call it pencurian ikan, illegal fishing, because of the huge size of the country and also very limited capacity of patrolling the whole area in the ocean. That's why we also uh, uh, build cooperations with Australia and with our uh, neighboring countries uh, like Thailand um, and Singapore, and also with the help of the US for the remote sensing uh, technology. So again, uh, um, Indonesia is very keen to intensify collaboration with any partners that would like to uh, collaborate with Indonesian institutions to, for uh, environment conservation. Um, I have some notes here, for instance, uh, on Marin also, because Ibu is, uh, you have a very good experts on Marin. As an archipelago country, Indonesia is uh, a strong proponent of hosting the World Ocean Conference and also uh, the what's called a tri triangle initiative uh, during, uh, in 2009. Right. And we have a strong support from Australia and, and also New Zealand and some other countries in, uh, in the Pacific. So again, I would like to take this opportunity to express my uh, gratitude uh, for all by Awan and Tim, also, of course, TNC, for your 21 years uh, presence in Indonesia to help the government, to help the institution, at least three institutions that I referred to at the very beginning, uh, environment, Ministry of Environment, and also fisheries and uh, forestry. So again, thank you very much. Of course, this is not the end of the discussion. We still have time, and this is uh, Friday. Thanks for it's Friday, <laughs> so you can do whatever you want to do uh, on Fridays, and Pak Arwan will be leaving tomorrow. So if you want to have a discussion or to ask something uh, which is not touched during the discussion, please don't hesitate to uh, kidnap them or to lock them here. <laughs> and we have still have some Indonesians uh, traditional food there. Please uh, enjoy the evening. Again, thank you very much.